Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Matthew Hahn, and by the age of 25, I manage multi-million dollar software solutions for the Department of Defense. And now we're gonna talk about employee turnover. So, what is employee turnover? Well, there's two types. There is a good employee turnover, where you fire them, it is what it is. And there is bad employee turnover, where they fire you, right? When they quit, when they leave, when they stop showing up, any and all of the above. So, why would an employee fire you? That's what we're here to talk about. So, when it comes down to why an employee would quit, why an employee would leave, why an employee would start looking for employment elsewhere, it comes down to fulfillment, right? And fulfillment is different for every person. We will get into that, but for now, let's explain why. So, let's say I gave you a million dollars, okay? But... Tomorrow, you fell ill, right? You got cancer or something. Unfortunate as that may be, would you take the million dollars? No, you wouldn't, because no one wants cancer, okay? Well, let's say I gave you a million dollars, but you died tomorrow. Would you want it? Still no, because you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Well, let's say I gave you a million dollars, but you did not have the time to spend with friends, family, and loved ones. Would you still want it? No, because your relationships are worth more than one measly million dollars, hopefully. Well, that is fulfillment. You need to, or as people, we want to know that the work that we are doing has a payoff that is greater than, right? Okay, so what does this look like from our employees? Well, an employee may look for multiple different things inside a business, and the more check boxes you can tick off, the better, right? So let's start here. For one, environment. Do they like their coworkers, right? Do they like their supervisors? Do they have the capability or the freedom to work from home, work in the office, hybrid? Are they just showing up to do the job and then leaving? Do they have to think about work when they're at home beyond? Do they, um, do they have free communication um, with their supervisors and do their supervisors? Now we're stepping more into the leadership side, but we're gonna, we're gonna continue on. So do they have free communication with their leadership? Does their leadership clearly define what is expected of them? Do they give good feedback? Do they give constructive feedback? Do they have issues with how they communicate things back to them from a stance of um, emotions, right? Does it feel like they are lower than or do they feel bad about the situations? All of these things fall into fulfillment for the employee. Some people only want to show up for dollars. Some people want to show up for the cause. Some people want to show up because they enjoy the people. All of these things fall into play. So how do you fix those? Well, the best thing you can do is start with leadership because leadership forges culture. When you are the business owner and you are the leader, they follow your example. So if you have a bad example, they follow the poor example. And it's 10 times more difficult to look in the mirror and realize I am the problem or just say that I can't find good employees. So the easy thing is to just look in the mirror and say, it's me, I'm the problem. Hi. But from fixing that, you no longer run into this same recurring issue that you have in the past because culture forms based off how you guide the people. You form the culture based off what you allow, what you accept, what you tolerate, right? Okay, with that being said, how do you fix this problem? One, feedback. You want to give them a good example of what good looks like of the thing that you tell them that they're going to do, and then you call them out as soon as possible in a constructive way when they do poorly, right? So they know what they have to do, they know what good looks like, which is what they're striving for, and you will help them get there. That is important, number one, right? You reward the behavior that you want to see, and rewarding is 10 times more effective than punishment. 
Why? Because if you punish someone when you catch them doing something poorly, that teaches them to just, jeez, that teaches them to just hide. You don't want them to hide because then you don't see the actual problems at hand, right? Which brings us to our next point. You want to have the open communication. When you have open communication, you see what they see. And that is a very big and important piece inside a business is that you know what the weaknesses are within that business. If you, sorry, if they bring bad news to you and you blow up at them, that tells them not to bring bad news to you. When bad news is the thing you need to fix so that it is gone for good, right? You want to reward that behavior. What else can we do? Um, by rewarding enough good behavior and weeding out those that do not follow through with the good behavior, or at least give them a fair shot, a fair stab, and talk them through to guide them of what you want to see them lean towards, you start building the culture. And the culture is, like we said earlier, what is allowed and accepted by you. So bringing it back to turnover. If you want to resolve employee turnover, then you need to find what makes them tick. You need to find ways that you can reward them. You need to find ways that you can communicate better. You need to find ways where you can give them a goal of things that you want to see more of and things you want to stay away from or see less of. You want to find ways that you can help them and make sure they feel like they are trusted um, have the freedom and are secure. And sometimes security is the difficult piece, but open communication of what I know you know and what you know I know and that we are a team. These are all pieces that will help you lower the actual employee turnover. And the reason why I know is because these are all things that I looked for that I did not have when I was on a weak team. I could not communicate with my supervisors because when I did, they wouldn't know how to give me pieces that would help. They wouldn't know how to actually handle situations. They wouldn't have the conversation because they did not know. But you are the business owner, you know all. And if you don't know, well then communicate that to them because that way they at least know that you aren't holding out on them, right? Um, I didn't have a good way to end this video. <laughs> I really didn't. But I hope you got some nuggets and some ideas. Um, I'm open to conversation. We can actually have one in the comments or you can just use the link and talk to me in person. So these are all points that I want you to think about. If you want to lower employee turnover, you need to fulfill them. And that starts with letting them know what is expected of them, um, what they're gonna be graded on, how well they perform, how well the environment or how good the environment is and how good your leadership skills are which all boils down to communication and expectation um, along with accountability, hold them accountable. So I hope this was useful to you and I will see you in the next one. So thank you for your time, Matthew Holland, signing off.